So not only are the NFL playoffs set, but also when they are being played. And the obvious highlight of that group, especially for someone who lives in the state of Michigan, is the Lions versus the Rams. And that matchup may or may not be getting its own dedicated video on Friday. However, today we're going to break down the playoffs as a whole, as well as predicting who I think wins the first round of the playoffs. So with the intro out of the way, I'd like to say hello and welcome to the JSA studio. I am your host as always, Nathan, and today we're going to be breaking down the NFL playoffs, starting with the NFC playoff picture. The one seed in the NFC is the San Francisco 49ers. The two seed is the Dallas Cowboys, and they will play the seven seeded Green Bay Packers. The three seeded Detroit Lions, who won the division for the first time while I've been alive, will be playing the Rams in the the matchup of the first round of the NFL playoffs and number four seeded Tampa Bay Buccaneers will be playing the five seeded Philadelphia Eagles in what is a sneaky tough matchup for the Eagles. Obviously, since I'm only going to be breaking down the first round of the playoffs, I'm not really going to talk about San Francisco all that much. So I'm going to use this time to kind of give my thoughts on San Francisco. I think there may be a little bit overrated. I do really like Brandon Ayuk and the, the offense that they run. Christian McCaffrey is very, very good, obviously. But I think the offensive line is not as good as it's being repped. It's still above average. It's still like a good line, but it's not world-breaking. And I think the Cowboys, with the exclusion of right tackle, but Lael Collins is coming in. So I think the Cowboys and the Lions, maybe also Tampa Bay and the Eagles, have a better overall line than San Francisco and I also think their defensive line is a tad bit overrated Chase Young isn't it Randy Gregory is also not it but Javon Hargreaves is it and when you have two pass rushers like Nick Bosa and Javon Hargreaves your pass rush is going to be very very good I actually think the strength of this team is their back step and the fact of the matter is they've gotten borderline elite caliber play out of their secondary and I think that is why they're the best team in the NFC. Not so much the pass rush, which I think is just good. The linebacking core is obviously the best in football. And I think the secondary is a top five unit in football as well. So I think that's the strength of their defense. And there's sort of the saying that defense wins championships. Well, that's not explicitly true. The fact of the matter is, in the NFL especially, coverage wins championships. And the San Francisco 49ers have the ability to cover at a very, very high level, which is why I do earnestly believe with home field advantage they do come out of the NFC. Shifting gears now into the individual matchups, we're going to start with the 2 versus 7 or Dallas versus Green Bay. This matchup, I think, genuinely boils down to two facts of reality, at least while I've been alive. Fact number one, the Dallas Cowboys suck in the playoffs. Doesn't matter how good they've been in the regular season, they're not good in the postseason. And rule number two, until they get to the NFC Championship game, the Packers always perform well in the playoffs. But more so than that, I also think Green Bay is kind of a bad matchup for Dallas, specifically because their defense is kind of structured in a way that makes it hard for Dallas to do what it wants offensively. But also, Jordan Love has legitimately been a top eight quarterback in the NFL since the second half of his first matchup with the Lions. And Dak Prescott has kind of fallen off a little bit, especially since the 49ers game. Hasn't been great. Now, okay, cool. He picked apart a commander's defense that's absolutely horrible. I don't care. That's not impressive. Anybody can do that. The nail in the coffin for Dak Prescott for me is the fact that he really had to almost struggle his way to 300 yards against the Detroit Lions when Nick Mullins threw for 400 yards against that Lions defense twice. The run game isn't what it was last year for Dallas when I actually liked them. I think the defense has taken 
kind of a step to the side because I don't think they're as good overall as they were last year, but they're definitely better at some things like rushing the passer and in coverage. However, the linebacker play has not been great, and Green Bay lives in the intermediate area. So I think there is a pathway for Green Bay to move the football, and Dallas will obviously put up points too. They're still a very effective offense. But I believe Green Bay is going to win this game, and I don't really have any concrete reason why. So just call it a gut feeling, and we'll kind of move on. Moving on to the three versus six game, the Lions versus the Rams. I think I'm going to probably experiment a little bit with my video on Friday, try out a new format for things in a long-form breakdown. But overall, my thoughts on this game are whoever gets the ball last wins the game. And I put it as Lions 38, Rams 35, because I genuinely think this is going to be a playoff shootout of epic proportions. Honestly, this is a coin flip game for me. Both of these teams are teams that actually have pretty good run defenses and pretty good also front sevens, but their secondaries are not very good. So I think both of these teams are going to drop back with their statues at the quarterback position, and the pass rush may or may not have an impact on the game. It's much easier to have an impact on the game when you don't have a quarterback that can move around. So potentially whoever rushes the passer better should win the game and throughout the season that has been the Rams. But I do think the Lions are a very, very good offensive line, maybe the best in football, especially at pass blocking. I think they kind of get this rep for being more run blockers rather than pass blockers, even though most people acknowledge that the offensive line is elite. I think the Lions are actually worse at running the football than they are at pass blocking. The problem is, every now and then, they'll just shit the bed. Every year, the past two or three years, Lions have had a solid offensive line, and they've had three games every year where they just can't block anybody. So there's a possibility that that's this game for the Lions, and if that happens, it's a wrap, the Rams win. However, I think the Lions win just slightly. I might have just like a 51-49 sort of tilt towards the Lions, because I do believe top to bottom, they are the better team. And the fact of the matter is, is that when they aren't playing the Vikings the past five or six weeks or so, the secondary has been much better. I don't particularly think uh, C.J. Gardner-Johnson returning to the field will have all that big of an effect. I think Kirby Joseph is good at doing what he should only ever be doing, which is playing deep safety in either a cover two shell or center field in a cover three assignment they kept asking him to do things other than that and he's not very good at stuff other than that and then all of a sudden against the vikings twice they decided to put him in that deep safety role and now all of a sudden he's making plays and looking really really good at the game of football again when it comes to the rams they've really kind of leaned into an identity which is We're going to run the ball and run a lot of play action off of our ability to be very good at running the football. The problem is the Lions are genuinely good at running the football. Like last year, the Lions run defense graded out pretty okay because teams were just throwing the football on them because the secondary was so absolutely awful. This year, there is a little bit of that, but teams have tried to run the ball on the Lions and outside of the Ravens, pretty much nobody has had the success that they had last year when teams actually decided to run the football. So the Lions' run defense is actually legit. Their secondary is god-awful, especially at the outside corner position, but it is what it is. Nevertheless, I am going to go with the Lions in this game mainly because in toss-up games, I do go with the team that I want to win, and I am a Lions fan, so I'm going to predict them to win the game. Last matchup of the NFC side of things is going to be Tampa versus Philadelphia, and this is way more interesting than I think people are going to want to admit. Baker Mayfield has actually been playing like really solid football this year, And the Tampa Bay offensive line, after having one bad year, is back to actually being really good. 
So this is honestly kind of a bad matchup for the Eagles. Tampa Bay can drop back and throw the football when they need to and be effective. Mike Evans is potentially a Hall of Fame caliber wide receiver. Chris Godwin is very, very good. And they have a couple of other options that are good as well. And Philadelphia's defense is absolute doo-doo mainly, in my opinion, because it's being piloted by the worst football coach I have ever seen at the NFL level in Matt Patricia. Somehow, some way, Philadelphia, after this year, has got to get themselves a defensive coordinator and bring in somebody who isn't from in-house. They need to go out and get somebody. Nevertheless, Philadelphia's secondary has played absolutely awful this year. The only piece that has at least been average, in my opinion, has been Darius Slay. However, I'm not sure how much of that is Darius Slay actually being average, as opposed to James Bradbury has been absolutely unbelievably awful, so teams are throwing at him. The pass rush is the only reason this defense isn't absolutely atrocious, as they do legitimately go four or five deep along the edge rush rusher position. However, in recent weeks, they have kind of fallen off a little bit, and that's been a major reason why they've looked the way they've looked the past few weeks. And I don't think they're going to look any different, really, if I'm being honest with you. So I've got Tampa Bay winning this game. I, I think Tampa Bay matches up pretty decently on the defensive side of the ball against Philadelphia's offense. Jalen Hurts hasn't been great this year. And if I'm being entirely honest with you, Tampa Bay winning this game would be absolutely hilarious. So that's kind of a reason I'm picking Tampa Bay to win. But also, I just flat out and straight up don't trust the Eagles to do anything of consequence. I mean, they started off like, what, 10-1 and one or something like that, 10-2? and two, uh, And then they finished the season 11-6? and six? Not great. Now we're getting into the AFC. The one seed on the AFC side is the Baltimore Ravens. The two versus seven matchup is Buffalo, who won tonight in a very, very good game against Miami. And they're playing the Steelers, who cannot have a losing record ever. They just don't. Uh, the Chiefs are hosting the Dolphins in a game that is expected to be very, very cold. And the Texans are hosting the Browns, who are maybe the hottest team in football right now. So just like in the NFC playoff picture segment, I'm going to use this little segment here to talk about Baltimore. To me, Baltimore would have to bring their C game consistently for them to not win the Super Bowl. I think they're head and shoulders above everybody else in the NFL this year. And I think Lamar Jackson is going to win MVP. And I think their receiving core has taken a step forward to the point where teams can't just play man coverage and contain Lamar to stop this offense. I genuinely think the Baltimore Ravens are maybe going to be able to cruise control their way to the Super Bowl. If they do have an Achilles heel, so to speak... I think it would probably be that Lamar, generally speaking, has not played great in the playoffs. Like, he's been okay. He hasn't been a liability. It's not like he and the Ravens suddenly turn into Clayton Kershaw and the Los Angeles Dodgers or anything. But he hasn't particularly had that signature playoff moment that a lot of young quarterbacks do have already. I mean, Josh Allen, Joe Burrow, Trevor Lawrence, these guys have signature sort of postseason performances, and I think it's kind of a little weird that Lamar doesn't really. However, I think he's probably going to get one this year because the Ravens are really, really good. The first game that we're going to talk about is the two versus seven game, Buffalo hosting Pittsburgh. And I don't think this game is going to be close. Buffalo has won five straight. They started six and six. They are now 11 and six. And I don't particularly think that's going to end anytime soon. Pittsburgh has kind of meandered their way into a winning record and stumbled themselves into the playoffs after starting three different quarterbacks this year. And uh, Mason Rudolph ain't it. He's been playing better than Kenny Pickett and Mitch Trubisky. 
Now, that's not a particularly high standard, but, you know, whatever. But I mainly think that's because the offense is different, not only without Matt Canada, but also when he's in the game. And NFL defensive coordinators haven't quite figured out how to stop him yet. However, I think they do figure it out this week, mainly because he does have three games, I believe, under his belt now, and it's usually the fourth game where NFL teams start to figure it out a little bit. So I think Buffalo is going to be able to slow down Pittsburgh, and I think they have enough offensive firepower, potentially with T.J. Watt missing time as well. That's not great. Nevertheless, I think Buffalo is going to be able to score points, and I don't trust Pittsburgh to be able to do that. So I have Buffalo winning the game 27-17. to Next matchup is the Chiefs versus Dolphins. And I think this is a game that might be dictated by the weather. Because I do think the Dolphins probably would have been able to score some points against the Chiefs. And I just don't believe the Chiefs can do anything offensively right now. However, this game is currently predicted, we're a week away, but this game is currently predicted to be at zero degrees with a wind chill that puts it at like negative 12. So I don't think Miami is used to playing in those conditions, and I think Kansas City is. So I think Kansas City might be able to turn around and hand it off to Isaiah Pachanko and just kind of grind their way to a dirty but ultimately convincing win in the first round of the playoffs. And the last game, to me, is the second most interesting matchup of the playoffs. The Houston Texans host the Cleveland Browns. Remember earlier when I was talking about Mason Rudolph and how NFL defensive coordinators kind of figure you out in your fourth or fifth game? There's a significant possibility that D'Amico Ryans is about to do that to Joe Flacco and this Cleveland team. Now, I will say this. I think what Joe Flacco has been doing is a little bit harder to stop because a lot of his passes are just deep passes, and he's always been extraordinarily good, like genuinely elite at throwing the deep ball. So I think there's a lesser probability that he sort of gets done in like Josh Dobbs got done in by NFL defensive coordinators once they had a good amount of film on him. But it is still a possibility. However, there's also the whole rookie quarterback thing, and we don't really know what that's going to look like. Also, the Browns secondary has been very, very good. Martin Emerson has been a breakout player, and he might win my awards that I'm going to do for the NFL this year. I have an award that the NFL doesn't actually do called Breakout Player of the Year, and Martin Emerson might actually win that award. Because I think, in my humble opinion, that they sent the wrong Browns call. Well, I think Ward has been good this year. I don't think he's been the cornerback one by any stretch of the means. I think Emerson has been significantly better than him. Ronnie Hickman has been that undrafted free agent that comes out of nowhere and plays like a superstar. That happens once in every draft class. And the Browns' secondary has been fantastic. Their pass rush has gotten significantly better as the year has gone on. And the Browns just have this sort of gritty feel about them where it's like it's never pretty like even Joe Flacco's thrown like six touchdowns and four interceptions in his three starts so like it hasn't been pretty but they just always win they just somehow manage to grind out an ugly win in a thoroughly entertaining manner and this is my second best matchup of the first round of the playoffs as I've already stated for a reason I think this is going to be a wildly entertaining game uh, and it's either going to be the sort of game where you don't know if good defense is being played or if it's bad offense and it's like 14 to 17 with like four turnovers between the two teams or it's going to be straight up be a shootout I'm leaning more towards a shootout than I am the sloppy sort of game. However, that is a possibility. Either way, I do think the Browns win the game. But that's just me, and what do I know? I'm just some asshole on the internet 
giving you his opinion. It's at this point I'd like to ask you to like if you liked the video, subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and if you disagree with me at any point, or if you just have something to say, go ahead and leave a comment down in the comment section below. And now with the outro out of the way, there's only one thing left to say, and that's that I'll see you next time.